Aloha, my name is Alexis and I am a first year PhD student living in Hawaii. I am in the Biological Oceanography program at University of Hawaii at Manoa and I study zooplankton and the midwater impacts of deep sea mining in the Clarion Clipperton zone. Last month I just got finished with my first semester of grad school so I figured I would share a little bit about my experience this semester, um, get you caught up on what I've been doing because I've been gone from YouTube for a while, and just share the things that I struggled with and the things that went well this semester. In the second half of this video, I'm also going to be sharing a few lessons that I had learned from this semester that may be useful to you guys. So let's get started. So this semester, like most other universities, was being taught online. All of the classes were via Zoom which was difficult for entirely different reasons. Zoom classes are very weird, but regardless, it was a pretty good semester. So I took 11 credits and three core classes last semester. The classes were benthic biological oceanography, marine microplankton, ecology, and physical oceanography. I actually ended up getting A's in the first two courses, which are more biology related, so it makes sense. They were a little bit easier for me. And I got a B in my physical oceanography class, which I'm not upset about at all. Honestly, that class was really difficult for me, and I know I struggled with physics during undergrad, and that didn't really change. I struggled with physics um, during that course as well. The math wasn't too hard, it was just, I don't know. I'm not good at physics, so I'm very happy with a B, and overall it was a pretty good semester as far as grades go. So aside from classes, I also had to work as a teaching assistant this semester. So unlike other teaching assistants, I wasn't actually teaching a course or grading any assignments. Instead, I was designing this lab course to go along with the lecture for Introduction to the Environment, Sustainability, and Climate Change. This is a pretty large undergraduate course designed for non-science majors, so it's just a very general introduction to topics in ecology, the different types of ecosystems and the different parts of ecosystems, and key issues in climate change that we think kind of everyone should be aware of. So my job last semester was to create this lab manual that the students can use to conduct the labs and write up their lab reports. I also had to create keys for all of the lab reports and design pre-lab quizzes and answer keys for those quizzes. And I had to do this for eight different labs. And I did manage to get all of this work done um, throughout the semester. I actually finished my TA work very early because most of it had to be done by October, which would give the professors enough time to review my work and send back revisions. So all of that got done and I was so, so happy. It felt really nice to get all of that work done and basically create a whole lab course by myself with very little instruction from the professors. I will admit that I had a very hard time in the beginning. Um, I just wasn't getting the work done fast enough and didn't really show the professor that I was capable of doing this work. So at one point he was actually just considering putting me to grading assignments and writing the lab course himself because there was a time crunch and it was something that really, really needed to get done. But after talking to the professor after all of that happened, we decided that he would just keep me on this project and gave me a very strict schedule of what labs he wanted done when. And yeah, I ended up getting everything done on time and actually quite a bit early, which was really nice. So that is how my classes and TA work went this semester, and that's pretty much how I spent most of my time. Once I got a little bit better at managing my time and more used to the workload of graduate level classes, I started going into lab and making a little bit more progress on my research. So throughout the semester, I had weekly meetings with my research advisor, which was really nice because we would just catch up about how classes and everything was going. She also sent me a massive folder of readings that I should start doing to get more familiar with my research area. 
So I try to make a little bit of a dent in that, but still have much more to do, honestly. I also had a few lab meetings, read some papers for labs, and gave a presentation on this new instrument called the Zoscan that I had been setting up and basically just trying to figure out. The Zoscan is a new fancy machine that we got for our lab, which basically allows you to create digital images of zooplankton, identify them, and then collect different biomass measurements of them. And zooplankton are basically these teeny tiny animals living um, in the ocean throughout the water column, and that is mostly what I'm going to be studying throughout my PhD. So yeah, that's basically how I spent most of my first semester in the lab. It was just learning more about this machine, reading a lot of papers about it, reading and revising different protocols from other labs that are also using this machine, and a lot of trial and error and just figuring things out, getting this machine to scan. And yeah, there's still much more work to be done, but that's as far as I got last semester. So now that you're kind of all caught up on how I was spending my first semester, I thought I would get into some of the main struggles that I had this semester. So one of my biggest struggles this semester was just feeling a little bit out of my comfort zone and feeling like I didn't know as much as the other students in my classes. And this is mostly because my background is in ecology and evolutionary biology. And my previous research experience is in reptile ecology. So not marine related at all. Luckily, I did do a marine science minor at the University of Arizona. So I have a very basic understanding of marine ecology and topics in marine conservation. However, I quickly realized that marine biology and oceanography are completely different. Oceanography is a little bit more focused on the environment and processes in the ocean, and I realized that's where I pretty much knew nothing. So all of this material was new. So I guess I just felt a little behind. I felt like when he was introducing new, very basic terms that I should know, I just didn't and it seemed like other students in the class did. But this also goes along with imposter syndrome and I just realized, you know what, I shouldn't be comparing myself to anyone in my classes. Everyone's at a different stage in their PhD, so there's really no point in comparing yourself to other students in the class. Another thing that I struggled with was time management and I found it very difficult to balance my time between classes, TA work, and still have time for research. I was only taking three classes a semester, but I didn't realize that three graduate level classes were equivalent to like six undergrad classes in terms of workload. There was just so much work that I wasn't really prepared for or didn't expect with a three course schedule. So it's something I struggled with at first, but also just something that I think you learn and get better at along the way. So as far as classes go, the two things that I struggled with the most were participating in in-class discussions and keeping up with final papers because there were a lot just for my three classes. So I think it's pretty common for grad classes to have these discussion sections where one to two students gives a quick presentation on a paper that the whole class was supposed to read, and then this is followed by a class discussion of the paper. And for some reason, participating in these class discussions was like the hardest thing for me. I just felt like I was the quietest person in the class, and I never really spoke up unless I was asked a question or unless it was a topic that I felt really familiar with. But yeah, I don't know why I was so hard, honestly. I think part of it is imposter syndrome, feeling like I don't know as much as the other students, and the other part of it just being because Zoom classes are weird, and it is very hard to constantly interrupt people, or you don't really know who's going to speak next, so that's pretty difficult, and it's way too easy to just sit back and be quiet and say nothing in class when you're online. And it's not like I didn't read the papers or I didn't understand them. I did, it was just, I couldn't speak up. I don't know why. <laughs> but that's something that I'm gonna work on this semester. The other thing was keeping up with final assignments. So I think I didn't realize how important it is to start these assignments early, to talk to your professors about it, get some help, get some feedback once you have ideas, because 
The final papers come up very quickly and I found myself working on the papers like a week to two before they were due and these were like eight to ten page papers which is not smart of me at all. I got them done but it was very stressful and I think the quality of the papers would have been so much better had I started earlier and talked about my topic with the professor. So the final struggle that I'm going to talk about I think is pretty unique to me in my current living situation but I found it so hard to stay focused on classes while living in Hawaii because I was just constantly thinking about all of the other cool things that I could be doing. I was thinking about how nice it would be to just be surfing or at a beach or hiking. Literally anything else <laughs> other than doing my work that was right in front of me. So that was very difficult. All right, so that is it with the things that I struggled with this past semester. Now I'm going to quickly get into the 10 lessons that I've learned from this first semester in grad school. So the first very important lesson is time management. Who knew, right? This is something so common, but so difficult to just, ah, it's so hard. So I think as a grad student, it's very difficult to balance your time between courses, research, TA work, and your own personal life. So this semester was the first time that I had actually tried using Google Calendar and I found it to be extremely useful for blocking out periods of time that you can dedicate to working on TA work or doing homework or reading papers. I would highly recommend it for any student actually. And going along with that, I think Pomodoro sessions would be really useful. I think the typical Pomodoro session is working for 25 minutes and taking a five minute break. I typically like to work for 45 minutes or longer and take like a 15 minute break. Um, but you could customize it to what works best for you and I think that's a good way of just focusing on a single task with no distractions, so no looking at your phone, no searching the web for something else. It just really helps you focus, I think. All right, so the second lesson that I've learned is there's a whole lot of reading for grad school. There is background reading for your classes, reading for homework assignments, reading for class discussions, and a whole bunch of reading that you have to do for your own research topic. So there's so much reading and actually more reading than you can possibly manage, so I think it's important to prioritize your reading. I focused on the readings that I needed to know to participate in in-class discussions, uh, the readings that I needed for lab meetings, and any readings that related to homework. I also spent a lot of time reading papers that were within my PhD research area. So basically the lesson here is to prioritize your reading because there's no way that you're going to be able to do all of it. And if you can, I mean, great for you, but I definitely can't. So the third lesson is to start your final papers early and if possible, make them relevant to your own research area to kind of kill two birds with one stone. So for two of my classes this semester, I had to write a mock NSF grant proposal. So in order to write this grant proposal, I needed to familiarize myself with the topic and really dive deep into the primary literature. So what I did was choose a topic that I was one, interested in, and two, was related to my research in some way. So I was reading papers that would help me complete this assignment, but also papers that I needed to read for my own research area anyway. So killing two birds with one stone there. So the fourth lesson is that time off is very necessary. As a grad student, it's very easy to want to work on your classes or your research all the time. I know that there's a lot of grad students that set up their schedule as a nine to five, which is like a normal job so that they have some time at the end of the day to just relax or work on other stuff. But that is not something that really works for me. It would be nice to have free evenings, but most of the time I find myself needing to work on homework assignments or doing readings that are due later in the week. So not realistic for me, but I think it's important that you find some work-life balance and have boundaries, have days or times that you don't do any school-related work. Grad school is really difficult, so I think it's really important that you're taking care of yourself, um, relaxing, exercising, 
stuff like that. Being in Hawaii really helped me because I always wanted some time to see the island, go hiking, go to the beach, and I found that this is not only enjoyable, but it's necessary to feel refreshed and ready for work like the next week. All right, five is probably my favorite because it's also something that you hear time and time again, but imposter syndrome is real. And this wasn't something that I was ever really worried about in the beginning, but I think after taking classes, you realize like, wow, everyone here is really smart. Um, these students know so much more than me, like everyone knows so much. And, and I think it's just important to remember that everyone is in different stages of their PhD. So there are people in my classes that are first years and there's others that are like fourth or fifth years. So I think you really shouldn't compare yourself to other students in your class. I think you're better off just focusing on yourself and making sure that you are doing your best work. So lesson number six is to get to know your cohort. Your cohort is the group of students within your department that begin the same year as you. So I think my cohort is about 10 people. And honestly, I don't really know all of them, but there is a good group of them that I do know now. It is definitely very challenging to get to know other students in your classes and your cohort during the pandemic when everything is over Zoom, but I think it's important to get creative and just reach out to them, send them an email, ask them about a class. I'm sure they're equally as interested in getting to know you as well. So definitely don't be afraid to reach out because getting to know the other students, especially those in your cohort, just makes the PhD experience that much more enjoyable. And it's also really nice to just have people in your class that you could just privately message during Zoom classes. It's always kind of funny. So lesson number seven is to get to know your professors. And this is important for many reasons, one of them being it makes it much easier to ask questions once you know the professor. It's also nice if you want to discuss upcoming projects or final papers. And lastly, it's just really important to get to know the other professors in the departments and for them to get to know you as well. Number eight, working from home is difficult, especially if you live on your own. I've noticed that I am much more productive when Lydia is here because there is someone watching me and making sure that I'm not just like laying down or sleeping or messing around. <laughs> I think this is the reason we have offices, you know? It's easier to work in a place where other people are being productive too. So if you can, I think it's very helpful to work at a coffee shop or go to your office if you have one. Number nine, you are a researcher first. I think I mentioned this before, so hopefully it's not getting too repetitive, but it's important that you prioritize your research. I know from undergrad, we're all used to just focusing on our classes and making sure that we do as well as we can in those. And it's a little bit different in grad school. Classes aren't as important as doing well and making progress in your researches, because in the end, your GPA doesn't matter that much. It is important that you're learning the fundamental concepts and that you're getting to know your professors and doing your best, but it's much more important that you're actually making progress on your thesis or dissertation and working on publications. So I think that's a lesson that's kind of difficult to understand, especially as a first year grad student coming straight from undergrad. You think classes are the most important thing and they're kind of really not. You should still do well in them, but prioritize your research. And number 10, it's all about trial and error and figuring out what is best for you. So honestly, just finding out the best way to set up your schedule, when you work best, how to study, how to take notes, um, how to be most productive when you're writing, and all sorts of things. So yeah, just find the way that works best for you. And that is it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope it was helpful, at least a little bit, in some way. Please give this video a like, comment, or subscribe if you enjoyed it. Thank you. Peace. Ah, bye.